Okay, what's up everybody? So, today we are going to talk about which one is the Antichrist. Now, we've done a video about this before. We have actually done a video about this. Maybe you saw it yesterday, last night, or the night before. Not sure when we uploaded this. Um, but I wanted to get to kind of who is behind the power of the Antichrist? Who is the true Antichrist? Now we know, we know, again, we've talked about Yahuka or whatever his name is, uh, Shlomo, the false Messiah of Israel that's been going around doing miracles for some reason in, in Israel. Now, obviously, he is an Antichrist, right? He's not the true Messiah. Obviously, we, we took a look at that. If you guys want to watch that video, link is in the description box. Um, we know that King Charles is not the Antichrist, even though there are certain things that he does and believes that are not Christian um, and not biblical. He is not the Antichrist. Uh, the Pope, now this is kind of tricky. We know that the Antichrist system is the papacy. So is the Pope the Antichrist? Now I'm going to say in, in a physical, in, in, in the physical, like kind of like, um, the the guy who's the who's representing the antichrist i would say yes i would say yes now a lot of people are going to say yes he's the antichrist or the papacy is the antichrist i do agree that the papacy is the antichrist and if you guys have not yet watched the movies from babylon to america and from america from america to babylon the links are in the description box i would recommend that you guys watch those movies um, it's, a, you know, those two movies are pretty much the part one and part two of a whole six hour, probably Bible study on who the Antichrist is and who is the, the beast of Revelation 13, which is the same thing, Antichrist and beast of Revelation 13. Um, what is the mark of the beast? All that good stuff. Again, if you guys want to watch those two movies, the links are in the description box. The Amazon links are in the, in the description box. But what I want to talk about today is who is the real Antichrist. We know that the Antichrist system is the papacy. We know that the Pope is the spokesperson of, that, of the papacy, which is the physical manifestation, I guess, or the physical representation of the Antichrist. But who is the real Antichrist? Now, the word anti doesn't necessarily mean against. We know that the, anti, the word anti means against, but the, that word anti doesn't necessarily only mean against, right? So antichrist doesn't necessarily only mean against Christ. The word anti also means substitution. It means a, a substitute for whatever it is that you're, you're substituting. So antibody, a substitution of your body, right? So anti also means replacement or substitution. So the word antichrist not only means, doesn't only mean someone who is against Christ, but it's also someone who is the substitute or replacement Christ. Now, for those of you guys who watched our video, maybe again, two days ago, probably, you guys will know that the Pope, the, his 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 official title is Vicarious Filii Dei, which means the substitution or the replacement of the Son of God, which also means Antichrist, the replacement of Christ, Antichrist. And that's why I believe that the Pope, in a way, is antichrist or the antichrist but he is not the true antichrist now almost forgot my intro what's up everybody welcome to class this is where we investigate 
prove and observe and we test every doctrine with the truth of God's word. My name is Tilla. You guys can follow me on all social media. Links are in the description box. Special shout out to our supporters, those who keep this ministry afloat. If you guys want to support or are inspired to support, you guys can do so by not only subscribing, but, but also sharing our videos and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv. The donations do help. It does help us keep this ministry afloat and it does help pay the bills around here. So thank you guys for that. Without further ado, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again, Father, for giving us this opportunity to study now. Um, we know who physically is the Antichrist, um, but we are now wanting to know who the real power is behind um, who the Antichrist is. And I know that we we all know who that is, but we want to know from the Bible um, who that is and how we can avoid, and not, not only avoid, but also fight um, who this Antichrist really is. So please be with us now, Father. We ask that you please lead us in the study. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so who is the real Antichrist? For those of you guys who know already who the real Antichrist is, not just the papacy, comment them in the comment section below and I will take my favorite comments and I will uh, read them to you uh, in the next video. Okay, so let's go to Daniel 7 verses 17 and 23. It says, now Daniel 7 is a prophetic chapter of Daniel and it is talking about, the, the prophecy is about four beasts, okay? We are going to see what beasts mean in the Bible. Look what it says. Daniel 7 verse 17. You guys are probably familiar with this already. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. So a beast in, the, in, in Bible prophecy is a king. But take a look at verse 23. Thus he said the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. So a beast is not only a king, but it's also a kingdom, a political figure and a political superpower, a super nation, right? Watch this now. Revelation 13, verse 1. It says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now this is the Antichrist. This is the Antichrist. And many scholars, maybe many Bible scholars will, will tell you that this um, beast of Revelation 13 and the little horn of Daniel 7 and the Antichrist, same exact entity. This is the Antichrist power. Okay. Now it says, again, it says that this is a beast, which means what? It's a political figure or political, uh, it's a kingdom or a political superpower, a super nation. Okay. Now we know that this beast is the Antichrist system, which is who? From the last video, last couple of videos, we know that this is the papacy. This specifically, this first beast of Revelation 13 is the papacy. And again, for those of you guys who don't know, please watch the movies from Babylon to America and from America to Babylon. Amazon links are in the description boxes. Again, a six-hour Bible study on who the beast is and what is the mark of the beast. Why is that on the forehead? Why the right hand? Okay, so anyways, look what it says in verse 4 of Revelation 13. Look what it says. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast who was uh, saying, who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him. So they worship who? The dragon... The dragon who gave power unto this beast. So the dragon gave this beast its power, its seat and authority. Let me ask, what is a dragon? Now we know in, in Revelation 12, we know that the dragon is Satan. But what is a dragon? A dragon is also a beast. Okay, A dragon is also a beast. So, a, so this dragon is a kingdom, a super nation. Who is this dragon? Watch this. Revelation 12, starting from verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. Now, a woman in the Bible is a symbol for the church. Now, we know that from Jeremiah 6 and verse 2 and Ephesians 5 and verse 25. Jeremiah 6 and verse 2 says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate 
woman. That's talking about Israel. That's talking about Israel, the congregation of God. So God's true church or true congregation is called a, a woman. So in the Bible, a woman is a symbol for the church. Okay, and this woman is clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them down to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Who is this child? Look what it says. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a, with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. This child is who? Who is the, who is the child that, that was caught up unto God and to his throne? None other than Jesus Christ. Okay, so if if the dragon, who is a beast, wanted to kill this child, who is Jesus Christ, as soon as he was born, can you guys think? Can you guys think of a scenario in the Bible where a kingdom wanted to kill Jesus Christ? What kingdom is that? Remember King Herod in in the book of Matthew. King Herod was a king of pagan Rome. He was the one that wanted to kill Jesus Christ as soon as soon as he was born. So this beast then, the dragon, is pagan Rome in the secondary sense. Now we're going to look at the primary sense. But in the secondary sense, this beast or this, this dragon is pagan Rome. Now watch this. Watch this. Revelation 12, starting from verse 7. Look what it says. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So who's the dragon? Primarily, that old serpent called the devil and satan so in the in the primary sense the dragon is satan in the secondary sense the dragon is a beast that beast is a kingdom and that kingdom is pagan rome the kingdom the, the kingdom that wanted to kill jesus as soon as he was born does that make sense in the primary sense the dragon is satan in the secondary sense the dragon is rome so satan is the power Behind the, the serpent, which is pagan Rome, who wanted to kill Jesus and gave the papacy its power and great authority. Did that actually happen in real life, in, in history? Who was the, again, we know that pagan Rome, the king of pagan Rome, Herod, was the one who wanted to kill Jesus as soon as he was born. But did pagan Rome give the papacy its seat and great authority? In fact, it did. You guys can look it up. You guys can look it up. It was Constantine that gave papal Rome its seat and great authority. Constantine. You guys can look this up. Google this. Google this. So, so now we know then, that the papacy got its seat and authority and its power from pagan Rome. Pagan Rome is that dragon in the, in the secondary sense. In the primary sense, who is the dragon? Satan. Satan is that dragon in the primary sense. So, if Satan is the dragon in the primary sense, then we, then we can say that Satan was the one that gave the papacy its seat and power and great authority. It's Satan. Not just pagan Rome. It's Satan in the primary sense. Watch this. Did you guys know? So, so, so now we can say that Satan is the true power behind the Antichrist. And if Satan is the true power behind the Antichrist, then Satan is the true Antichrist. Watch this now. Remember, Anti doesn't necessarily mean against 
something. Anti can also mean replacement of something. So, Antichrist doesn't only mean someone who is against Christ, but also someone who's trying to be the replacement Christ. Now, we saw that in the Pope, Vicar Vicarious Filii Dei, Vicar of the Son of God, meaning replacement Christ. Who's also against Christ? Because the papacy, what did they do with, with, with God's Ten Commandments? They changed it. They are the ones that, 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 that thought they can change times and laws. They tried to change God's commandments. So, the papacy is against Christ. The papacy also claims to have a man there that can be the replacement Christ. So the papacy, the papacy is the Antichrist in a physical sense. But the real power behind the papacy is who? Satan. Watch this. Watch this. Isaiah 14, starting from verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did uh, didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Is he, is he trying to place himself against God? He is. Because he wants to compete with God. So he's placing himself against God. But, but, but watch this now. Watch this now. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. What does that mean? I want to replace the Most High. I will be like the Most High. I'm going to go against Him and I'm, and I'm also wanting to replace Him. You don't need God. Did you guys know? Do you guys remember what Satan said to Eve? Satan said to Eve, You don't need God to know what is good and evil. You can be God. So he would so Satan was trying to place that same antichrist spirit in Eve. But who remember he says that I will be like the most high. Who really is like the most high? Hebrews 1 Starting from verse 1, look what it says. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, that's Jesus Christ, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, Express image of it. That means he is like the Most High. Jesus is the express image of the personhood of the Most High. So Satan wanted to replace Christ as the one who is the express image of the Most High. He said, I will be like the Most High. But who really is like the Most High? Jesus Christ. So, we are not only dealing with physical antichrist, which is the papacy. But the papacy is just the secondary sense of who the antichrist is. The true antichrist is who? Remember, we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. We are, we are wrestling with what? Spirits. We are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Spirits. We are wrestling against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. It's a spiritual battle. And if it's a spiritual battle, then you need what? You need who, by the way? You need the Holy Spirit. If we are, re if we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, or against powers and rulers of the darkness of this world, then we are wrestling against spirits. And if we are wrestling against spirits, then who do we need? We need the Holy Spirit. That's who we need. We need Christ in our hearts.
That's the only way that we can defeat this Antichrist. Not just the physical, literal, physical Antichrist, but the power behind that physical Antichrist, which is who? Satan. We need the Holy Spirit. Praise God always. The Mark of the Beast. What is it all about? Now, this subject is probably one of the most debated when it comes to end time events. Is it a microchip or a tattoo that people are forced to wear in their foreheads or right hand? It's much like hunting for an animal's footprints. How would you know what footprint we're looking for if we do not specify which animal it is from? It is the beast's mark. They will also have the name of the beast and the number of his name. And what number is that? That number is 666. Now it's time for us to really dig deep and figure out what is the papacy's mark of authority.